Hello students and welcome to lesson one of unit five part one. In this lesson we are going to be talking about relations and functions and we are going to be talking about them in general as just relationships at this point in your knowledge. Our essential questions for today are one what do relations and functions represent and two what types of variables are relations and functions made of before today you have only known of variables as one type a representation of an unknown value today you're going to learn about two different types of variables and how they represent relationships of relations and functions so what I would like you to do is for a minute pause the video and write down all the words or phrases you think of when you hear the word relation or the word function. So pause your video and take a minute to do this. Now when I think of relation I think about family. Family is all of your relatives. Dictionary.com defines relation as an existing connection between things. And if you think about family, family have a connection because they are all related relation to a certain family member, such as a grandma. When I think of function, I think of the consistent working condition of a machine. My father used to work at Bonnie Forge where his job was to monitor a machine and on a good day's work the machine worked it with a consistent function or in working condition to produce what it was intended to produce. Dictionary.com defines a function very similar to the way I think about it and it defines it as to consistently achieve the purpose for which something is designed or exists. So in other words it is des whatever something is designed to do it consistently achieves that purpose. Both of these words describe relationships and all I want you to take from today is that both relation and function is about a relationship. A relation is a connection between things. A function is a specific way that something works to produce something else. In other words, there's a relationship between two things as well. Relationships exist in countless circumstances in our world making and losing money based on an item's marketability, how populations of various regions may be related to health, income, jobs, education, death rates, and so on. Those are all relationships in our world. How influential time is on our lives. The relationship between time and the number of days is a constant relationship. The relationship between time and weight loss is a relationship that a lot of people look at. The speed, of a dirt, the speed a dirt bike should enter the big air competition in relation to the angle of the ramp. It's a considered relationship for that sport. Plant growth, the amount of fertilizer used, or the number of days since germination. Farmers are looking at the relationship between what they do to their crops, how long they let them grow, or how much they fertilize them, and how much they grow. There is a connection between two different variables to create a relationship. In all of these examples that we've talked about, relations and functions are just a way of defining the relationship between sets. Now a relationship be can be between more than two sets. So for example, if we go back to this example right here in the center if you think about population does it depend on only one circumstance and the answer is no population depends on many aspects of life so a lot of the relationships in our world are made of many different sets that are interconnected but our focus in this class will only be between two sets 
For examples, the relationship between the number of foul shots made to hours practiced. Is there a relationship between how much you practice and the number of foul shots you can make? And the answer is yes. They're related to each other. If you never practice, you're probably not going to make too many foul shots. If you practice a lot, you're likely to more, make more than you would if you didn't practice at all. Now look at the second example. The number of arms a person has, so how many arms the person has, and the number of brothers the person has. Is there a, a relationship between the number of arms a person has and the number of brothers they have? No, they don't connect at all. Just because you have two arms doesn't mean you have a certain number of brothers. Or just because you have a certain number of brothers doesn't necessarily mean you have two arms. There is no relationship here, but there is a relationship between these two variables. So just because you have two different sets doesn't necessarily make them a relationship. They have to relate in a way that one somewhat relies on the other. So the two sets that we're going to be talking about are the two sets that show a relationship. And any two sets that show a relationship will be either a relation or a function. And we'll talk about which one in the next lesson. Either way, when we have these two sets, most of the time, one set will depend on the other. So it's kind of similar to cause and effect relationships that you say in language arts class. If I touch the stove, I will get burnt. The cause is I touch the stove. The effect is I will get burnt. One causes the other or one depends on the other. The set that depends on the other is called the dependent variable. It is also represented by the variable y. So anytime you see the variable y, it is going to be representing a dependent variable. So here's a way that you can think about this. Here's a conversation between you and your mom. Your mom says, what is your grade in math class? And you say, well, it depends on my test grade. The dependent variable is your grade. Your grade depends on your test. So in other words, your grade in math class is the dependent variable. Your grade in math class would be the dependent variable. Because it is relying on how well you do on your math test. Now the other set is called the independent variable. The independent variable determines the value of the dependent variable. So if we go back to our example, what in this conversation is determining the grade in math class? Well, the test grade is affecting the grade in math class, or you can say it backwards. The grade in math class depends on the test grade. One way that you can remember independent and dependent is to think about a family. When a family goes to get their taxes done, the adults are called the independent people in the household. In other words, they can take care of themselves. The children in a family are called the dependents in the family because they rely on the independent people to take care of them. So that is one way that you can remember what the dependent and independent variables are talking about. Now, we're going to get one more definition, and that is what it means to define the sets or defining the sets. When you hear about defining the sets, this means to write in measurable words what the variable stands for. For example, let's pretend that we're defining the variable C. You see C here and here. If you write C equals cats, that's not very measurable because I don't know how to measure it. Is it 
the number of cats at school? Is it the number of cats in the barn? Is it the number of house cats? I'm not really sure what I'm measuring. It leaves me questioning what I'm looking for. Now, if you look at this one down here, this says C is equal to the number of cats in the barn. This is very measurable because I, now I know I'm counting by ones how many cats there are in the barn. And I can go do that because it clearly states with measurable words what C is standing for in my problem. All right, let's look at an example and work on defining the sets. The relationship between the number of foul shots made to hours practiced. Well, I like to create a depends on statement. So the foul shots I make depend on how much I practice. So in other words, the foul shots that I make, that's my dependent variable. Now I have to make it measurable. So I would write the number of foul shots made. That's measurable. Now, what is determining or deciding or helping me figure out the number of foul shots I made? Well, it is depending on how much I practice. Now, I've got to make it measurable. The number of hours spent practicing foul shots. And then you can read it back to yourself. I start with the dependent. The number of foul shots made depends on the number of hours spent practicing foul shots. And it makes sense because that does form a true relationship. Let's look at another example. The number of cans of soda purchased each hour from a school's vending machine. Well, if I start to kind of write a depends on statement, I would say the soda purchased depends on the hour of the day. And what I mean by that is, if it's 7 in the morning, kids might be purchasing sodas because they're getting to school. If it's 9 o'clock, it's unlikely that, that the kids are purchasing soda because they're in class. If it's 3 o'clock, it's likely that somebody's pur purchasing soda because everybody's staying after school or heading to the bus. If it's 9 o'clock at night, it's highly unlikely that someone is purchasing soda because they're at home. Now, try to look at what would be the dependent variable. Soda purchase depends. So soda purchase is going to be the dependent variable. So I'm going to write number of sodas purchased. Now, the number of sodas purchased depends on the hour of the day. And I'm going to write the time of day in hours. So read it back to yourself. The number of sodas purchased depends on the time of day in hours. And that makes sense.